just when I thought Apple forgot all about the Vision Pro, the company announced Vision OS 2, a giant update that brings together a whole lot of features that we've all been asking for, along with a few new things that we hadn't even thought of. Let's check it out. So I already installed the Vision OS 2 developer beta, which brings in a lot of the features Apple announced, but not all of them. Let's go through seven you can try out now and talk about the one I'm really looking forward to, but we don't have yet. Starting with the new Persona update. Apple continues to make this better, but in some ways, every time it improves the Persona, it makes it kind of worse because you notice all the more that nothing's quite right. This isn't really how my mouth looks when I talk. I don't have quite this much wrinkle to it when I talk. At least I don't think I do. Hair continues to be a big issue, especially for people like me who like to style it up. Apple just can't seem to understand that hair doesn't look like, I don't know, wax. And for that matter, skin texture, although improving, still doesn't look like real skin. It kind of reminds me of Data from Star Trek in a way. My eyes are lifeless, as always. I kind of look really bored in every single view. Teeth are still made up. That's not quite accurate to what my teeth look like. But Apple does some pretty impressive things. And you'll notice my eyebrows continue to move around and my mouth can move. You can do all kinds of weird gestures with your mouth. And it follows pretty well. I still don't know how I feel about personas though. It, until they get it picture perfect accurate, you're always gonna notice that it's, well, not real. And it's just never gonna get past that uncanny valley. And I don't know that they'll ever get to that point. Next up, we have some new hand gestures. Before, when you wanted to close and open things, you would have to reach up and touch the, the crown and that would let you open and close the main, <laughs> oh wow, look at that. This is definitely a buggy developer. Yeah, definitely. Buggy. So you would press the crown to get to the main menu. You don't have to do that anymore. Now you can open your hand and you have this new dot and that will do the same thing and let you get through the home screen. On top of that, once you have the dot, you can turn your hand over and now you have a new control center. You used to have to look upish and find the arrow and then tap that down to get to the control center. Not super bad, but not super convenient either. Now you have it right on your hand and you've got access to your control center. One new feature they threw in with that that's much easier to get the volume before you'd go into that control center, drag things back and forth. It just wasn't great. Now you can flip your hand, tap and hold, and now you've got your volume control all in one easy place. One new feature that just seems like a lot of duh, how is that not there to begin with, is the ability to customize this home screen. You could not rearrange apps before. You could not get compatible apps outside of that folder before. But now you can pinch and hold and much like iOS, drag things around. And you can take items out of the compatible apps folder now too. It's very similar, pinch and hold. And now you can say add to home view. If you decide you don't want it there after all, you can take one that you've added there, pinch and hold, and you can hit the delete button and you can say remove from home view instead. And that will put it right back in the compatible apps area where it belongs. It's a nice quality of life improvement, but again, I'm left wondering, how is this not here to begin with? You'll notice that I have a bunch of keyboards on my desk. We'll get to why in just a second. But first, we're going to show you a new environment that's available. Here for the first time is Bora Bora. And I rather like Bora Bora. It is a beautiful scenery. Now, let me know if you can hear the audio right now, because currently you sh the audio should be muted. But I understand that right now with the developed beta, it's not properly cutting that out as it should. So, yeah, I'm muted. Now I should have sounds. The daytime looks nice. The ocean looks so blue. Nighttime view as well is nice. We're going to that real quick. Quiet, peaceful. You could actually just kind of hang out here and just enjoy it. And while we're here in Bora Bora, we can try out a new feature. This has been rather buggy, so I don't know if it's gonna work, but we'll give it a shot. Now, when you open up Safari, 
and go to something like YouTube or Netflix, this is the best you could get because it wasn't the dedicated app like Disney Plus or HBO Max. But now in Safari, you can get a full, oh, still not working, should make the screen absolutely huge. There we go. And give you a nice overall view. And you can switch between the dark and light mode when you go into that theater mode. Now it does seem to be very buggy. Here we've lost it again, and I'm not gonna try and get it up one more time. But when it works, it works well enough. One more new feature that we have with the environment is pass-through keyboard. So right now I'm typing up here, and I am in full environment mode. And as you probably already saw, this Apple official keyboard is already pass-through seeing. It's not even connected up, it's just that Apple recognizes its own keyboards. I have over here instead a third-party keyboard, and notice it's not showing very well. We're going to unlock the environment real quick, and it's pretty close to what an Apple keyboard looks like, but it isn't recognized as fast. What does seem to help is if you have it at Bluetooth connected, which I currently do, and you pull open the keyboard. And then suddenly it, so it re realizes, oh, that is a keyboard. What I cannot get it to recognize under any circumstance is my Moonlander keyboard. And the Moonlander is very different than any keyboard out there. It's a split custom keyboard. I normally keep it up as well. It is not Bluetooth, so I can't test if connecting it would help any, but I don't think it would. Still, having that keyboard brought in is pretty helpful. I wish it was a little more quick to work with the third parties. Sometimes it doesn't want to work at all. And finally, we're going to test out the new photo spatial modes. The Vision Pro can now take your 2D photos and turn them into 3D spatial video. You'll notice that I have Cole here from Infamous along with my Nintendo Switch. Earlier, I took a photo of them with my iPhone in just 2D. I also took a bit of 3D spatial video of them, and then I took a photo of them with my Vision Pro in spatial. So we're going to open up the new Photos app, which has been updated some. Here is my photo I took with my Vision Pro, and I'm going to be honest with you, this is the one I like the least. There's something about it that doesn't quite line up right. We can move left and right, and you and it's hard to demonstrate 3D on a 2D video, of course, but in my eyes, the especially the center cover for the Vision Pro doesn't line up to my eyes right. I almost feel the need to try and readjust the, uh, the PID of my screens, but it doesn't work when I do. Something about the Camp Vision Pro cameras doesn't take 3D photos quite accurately. Compare that to this video I took, and it's a much better experience, and I rather like that 3D. And finally, this is the 2D version of the photo I took with my iPhone, and we can now hit this new spatial button, and it will scan the photo and bring it into the 3D world. It doesn't take long at all. And I have to say, it's a fairly convincing effect. It's not perfect. Again, it's not like I can lean around and see any additional details before it kind of just moves left and right. But inside the Vision Pro, it does pop out and stand out compared to the 2D version. And I honestly like it a little bit better than the image that I took with my actual Vision Pro. Now, unfortunately, not everything is available yet that Apple announced. The biggest feature that I was really looking forward to is a new ultra-wide display. I've already talked about using the virtual display with the Mac OS, and I've even shown how on a PC you can get something better at this point. You can get dual displays or even potentially triple displays with the right software. But on the Mac display, you're limited to one display only. And that's kind of a shame, especially considering the first one wasn't that big. Now, from what I can tell, you're going to have to look left and right because the field of view is just not this wide. I still am convinced that wearing the Apple Vision Pro for eight hours straight to do work on, I'm already hurting just from wearing the Vision Pro to make this video. I still can't recommend buying the Vision Pro right now, even with this new Vision OS 2 update. A lot of these features are needed. Some of them are just how is that not already there, like being able to rearrange the home screen? But 
at the current price, it's just well outside the need for anyone to buy. You could easily buy a nice computer setup and multiple monitors, even with the Mac Studio, for a similar price or less and be better off. I look forward to a future where Apple continues to work on this, and I hope they get down to a more comfortable version of this, because right now, my forehead is an agony. We need a future where these kind of devices are in a glasses-like format. And there are several glasses-like AR devices out there right now, like Xreal. Let me know if you want a review of AR glasses down in the comments below. That's all we have today, so don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.